Hi and welcome to my channel. Today we talk about one of the record holders in the PL last season and is nobody but Jao Paulini. He holds the highest tackles and deals one in his debut season for Fulham, which is more difficult than it sounds. So rumors being tossed around that he could be on the move in the next transfer window, which is just a few days from now. We get to dive into his game and spot our weaknesses, strengths and give you a simplified analysis of what he brings to his potential future team, being Chelsea, Liverpool or even Arsenal. I'm glad to announce we have partnered with SofaScore, a really cool football app that gives you quick live score and simplified football stats for players and teams and even offer you access to thousands of leagues worldwide and also a fantasy draft game that you can play online for fun. First, let's take a look at his numbers. His Clepolina is a defensive machine and he's got this top level anticipation that makes it easy for him to read the flow of the opposition play. And this gives him the license to read their passing pattern and jump into the line to steal the ball. He loves to get physical, making body to body contacts, but here's a surprising part. His tackles may look full of range, given the fact his approach to you always seems aggressive, but he always comes out in a more tidy fashion than most would have expected. He is very aware of how he goes around defending and winning the ball back being constantly aware of when and where to launch for a duel and when to just try something different. His intelligence decreases the possibility of him giving away a penalty and silly fouls in dangerous areas on time of the game. It's rare to find him having laps of concentration, where he ever creates spaces behind him that could be exploitable with the aim to mark a player with the ball. If he's to mark the player with the ball, he most times makes sure the spaces behind him is secure. This factor is also why I rate him highly in terms of how he protects the backline. And when he decides to chase down a player, he has more than enough endurance and patience to win back that ball. And this glimpse of him pressing Rice and Saka to go to force an error that led to poor and first goal is just a glimpse of what he can offer with his defensive game in relation to his attack. This aspect of his game I noticed have not been talked about lately. He led for the most XG generated after a tackle in the league last season. So this highlights how much he offers than just tackles and being a defensive stratum. His position numbers might seem underwhelming at first glance, especially for a player in the city and road. While some critics tend to magnify this aspect as a total failure, it's crucial we put these numbers into context to truly understand his contribution in possession. When you look at the numbers, Paulina doesn't make as many passes as the other defensive midfielders, and his passing accuracy doesn't stand out either. It's essential to look beyond the numbers because Paulinho's the passing game is not just about recycling possession with backward and short sideways passes. He loves to inject creativity into his passes, whether it's a long ball or a clever short passes that help his team move forward. Yes, he can be an elite defensive coverage for his team, but acting as a deep line playmaker might seem to be a stretch for him. Due to his lacking in accuracy and ability to detect the tempo of a game, yes, he can inject tempo with certain inventive passes, but he struggles to consistently manage or even try to slow down the tempo of a game in favor of his side. Also, with no pause in his game, he's definitely not a DLP material. Now, if I'm to be asked about his long passing technique, yes, his long bursts are delightful to watch. He doesn't hit them for show. His attention remains as often as he gets to hurt the opponent. Despite him having limited time on the ball, he manages to hit the ball at least 4 times per 90 and 60% chance of it getting to his target, that isn't bad. It's obviously a weapon in his playmaking inventory when aiming from the size of the pitch, but when he tries to go direct, for example in the counter situation, there's more chance of him wasting it than actually putting it to good use. And in terms of his creativity, yes, he's not taxed to be the one to provide a final ball, neither by his team or the role he plays, but he has shown glimpses of creative brilliance. There are moments he has pulled up passes from his pocket that not even his team is expected. It's not his strongest truth, yes, but these flashes of creativity are definitely one we could see time and time again. Looking at the stats alone, we get an assumption that he is an aerial dual machine. His leap and composure in the air is quite good and it's all easy for him till he goes against actual masters in the air. Oh yes, the twist, picture him in a high pressing team who forces the opposition to go out only by playing a long ball to the target man. But if the target man shows any level of competitiveness, Paulin is getting bullied. He stands out against normal opponents and lastly, his goal threat is highly influenced 
by his positioning and movement in the box while waiting for a cross. Let's talk about his goal threat. He's obviously sensational in this aspect of his game. Not minding his age and position, I've seen him scoring bicycle kicks, volleys and insane long range rockets that leave their like GKs hanging like bear shit in your backyard. His finishing technique is honestly too wide for a DM and that makes me wonder if he was a striker in his youth days. Now this year could make him a real difference maker if he was in a top club playing in a derby or a season defining match. You're definitely free to expect the unexpected from Paulinho to send in an absolute banger to the back of the net. So this is an exciting part of his game that can come crucial for those who are trying to salvage the title. His dribbling is another aspect of his game that is getting battered by his rival in his charts. In the eye test, he's got the physicality and athleticism to be able to shield the ball effectively and sometimes escape tiny spaces, where he doesn't have that ball manipulation or control to be able to charge at two players in the name of dribbling or creating highlight. Most times you see him dribbling is in the sake of keeping possession. But in my opinion, he's good enough to escape pressure and continue the flow of the ball. In conclusion, Marco Silva's tactical approach approaches Paul in a weakness in build up. We direct him build up responsibilities away from him that even a winger like William sees more touches and passes than Paulina. So he's definitely a tactical team. Concerning the high accumulations of Kai, first he's known Golo Kante and his robust style of playing akin to Kante leads to frequent booking because he doesn't have that tidiness compared to Kante and isn't just caught like that. But in a team with better possession, where fewer tackles are required, the aspect could better be managed. Now let's talk transfer. If he's to move to Arsenal, that means Rice becomes the eighth, and he's not better in build up than Rice, so that's no no. In Chelsea, yes, they've got loads of midfielders, but none of them have their experience in defensive coverage and ability to stamp their authority game after game. So Paulina buys time for these youngsters, and by the way, Enzo Saisi Olavia elites passes of the ball so they can mitigate his weakness if only they play them in a proper line of forgery formation. Liverpool move can be tempting, but he's already 28, and they've already got the likes of Salah, Van Dijk and Alisson almost past the era, so adding Paulina to that list wouldn't be smart, even though he can help immediately, so it should be about the price. So lastly, what limits Paulina game is where his strengths and weaknesses lies. If he was to have a very strong possession game, he would still be valuable to any Premier League side even at the age of 33. But his style of play, being a high paced ball winner, we've seen players like N'Golo Kante and Casemiro try keeping up the pace and what the ends is just injuries after injuries. What I suggest is similar due to how good your squad is, bad your midfield, you like attack, you like defense and goalkeeper, but midfield looks so flat. So um, if he is to join them, I could give them a real shot at winning the title again. And the pace of the league obviously fits him and buys him a few years. We've seen many easy transitions from the Premier League to the Serie A lately. In Tami, Lopez Cheek, Lukaku, Gerard, and even Weston McNeil. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this. Until next time, take care and remember Jesus loves you.